transformative power within us that is so basic, so simple, that we're almost blind to it. And this power lies latent within us all. This power is like a secret ninja Jedi superpower that can change the way we see our world, that can change the way we perceive of ourselves. When we relax our hearts into this power, we can dissolve the ego into pure beingness. When we can relax into this power, we are no longer an age, no longer a socioeconomic level, we're no longer a citizen of any nation. We're no longer tall or short or gay or straight. When we can relax into this power, our entire existence becomes sacred. The power that I'm speaking of is called listening. When I speak of listening, I'm speaking of more than simply hearing the words someone is saying to us. <clears throat> listening is, is bigger than our ability to hear. When we're truly listening, we're reaching out with our being. We're using all of our senses to perceive of something. We're letting go of control and allowing the world to present as it is. I'm not an expert in listening. I don't have a degree in listening. My name isn't William Gregory E.L., expert listener. I'm not an all-conference listener. I'm not an Olympic listener. I'm just an ordinary dude who happened to practice listening. And it's changing my life. One example I have is I have a daughter. Her name is Elowen, which rhymes with Hellion. <laughs> and, and being a dad is a precious thing to me. I always knew I wanted to be a dad. Being a dad is a sacred thing to me. And... Um, Elowen, I would call her Elowen, I'm not tired, Gregory. And Ellen is, is one of those little girls who starts talking the moment she wakes up and doesn't stop talking. And I've had the privilege of being her actual dad in real time and space, and I've spent a lot of time with her. And she would go, go, go all day long, and as the evening approached, she would get manic. And we would have a regular pattern. We would have dinner you know, and, um, and then we would have bath time. And then after bath time, we'd have this whole thing where she'd run around the house, you know, and I'm chasing her, and I'd dry her off, and i get her ready for bed, and she would go manic, and she would start crying, I'm not tired, I'm not tired. And this was almost, I'm not tired, I'm not tired. But listening to her, I, I know she's tired, although she's saying, I'm not tired. And we would go through this whole process of, uh, of getting in her jammies and, and getting her into bed, and she would want, I want my teddy bear. I'm thirsty, I want some water. I'm hungry, I want a snack. I don't want that teddy bear, I want this other teddy bear. And the whole time she's talking, I'm not listening to the words she's saying. You know, I, I hear what she's really saying. She's saying, I'm so tired, but I don't know how to let go. And so we would lay down, and I would read her a story. Sometimes I would tell her stories. Sometimes I would just make up stories out of the ether. And I would lay down with her, and sometimes she would be crying and screaming and thrashing, and I would just sit there patiently, and she would eventually fall asleep. Sometimes it would, you know, be so precious. Sometimes I'd be, thank God she fell asleep. But the, the concept I'm talking about is, is truly listening, not just hearing the words someone's saying. I've been practicing this in my life, too. I had the opportunity just recently 
You know, I, I grew up in Bend, so I feel a little entitled when I drive the streets of Bend. <laughs> and, I, and I'm one of those guys that when I drive somewhere, I, I know how I'm going so I don't leave myself with a naked left-hand turn across traffic. When I, when I come up to a four-way stop, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm looking to see who's paying attention. You know, I, I see who arrived first, but I'm also looking, is this dude going to take his turn? You know, is this person on their phone? Because, you know, if they're not, I'm going to go. When I approach a roundabout and no one's there, I just go through. When I approach a roundabout and someone's in front of me and there's no one there and they slow down, you know, I get irritated. <laughs> you know, so I can have some deep compassion on, on driving. And, and I also, you know, can get angry. And just recently I'm driving, and, and I'm driving, you know, conservative six to seven miles an hour over the speed limit. <laughs> there are those people who drive the speed limit, and that's okay too. But coming up on my butt is a guy in a big pickup truck and he's tailgating me and he's angry and I can see the expression on his face and I have a moment where I just get pissed off. Who do you think you are? And I remember this skill of listening that I've been practicing. I'm, you know, trying to see beyond words, trying to see beyond actions, to see through appearances, you know, what is really going on there. And I'm looking at this angry dude and I can see that he is absolutely in fear. I don't know what's going on in his life. Maybe he's going through a divorce. Maybe he's in a great deal of debt. Maybe he's late for work. But he is suffering. He is suffering and he is raging against a world that is out of his control. He's suffering and he doesn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, that whole pissed off thing I had dissolved and I started having compassion for a person who probably has little real meaning in their life. I mean, he bought the big truck. He has a big mud flap. So I'm sure he thought that would make him happy. But in this moment, he's suffering. He feels out of control. And I just happen to be there. It's nothing personal that's going on right now. And I'm listening without hearing what he's saying but I'm listening beyond appearances, and all of a sudden I feel a sense of peace, a sense of empathy, and maybe even a little pity. But I'm not angry, I'm not raging, I'm not braking and driving slower just to piss him off more. But my perspective on life changes. You know, I could have gotten really mad and, bra and braked more. There's a chance he could have followed me home. There's a, there's, there's a, a series of things that could happen which all would end up with me carrying this anger through my day. I've had, I had a time recently where I was at a grocery store, and I'm going through just buying my groceries. And the clerk is just kind of a jerk. And for a minute, I start to take that personally. I don't deserve to be treated like this. And I took a step back to practice this whole listening skill or device, and I just see a, a tired, overwhelmed, maxed out person just trying to get to the end of their shift. And this ninja Jedi listening skill can bring sacredness to our lives. There have been countless stories of someone standing on a bridge about to commit suicide. Someone standing on a building about to jump off. And all someone had to do was to walk up, sit down, and listen. That's what first care responders do. They ask a question and listen. That's what we go to counseling for or a psychiatrist. The big majority of that is listening. When we listen to someone, we're honoring them. When we can let go and listen, we're giving someone honor. I've had the experience where I'm in conflict and I'm angry and I'm talking to someone and, and I may have a point to prove. And if someone just sits down and listens to me, I become disarmed. I don't know how many times in relationships where I'm listening only long enough to hear what you're saying while I already plan out my counter-argument. And I've, I've practiced this in my life and in my relationship where I just keep my mouth shut. You know, because a lot of times I want to jump in there and steer it. Well, but, well, this. And I've noticed, and this is where the secret ninja Jedi thing comes in, is if we can just sit down and listen, we're disarming everything. 
We're, we're allowing the moment. We're telling this person, I, I hear you. Instead of reacting. Truly listening is a state of receiving, a state of allowing. You can even say a state of innocence. When we drop our need to control, when we drop our expectations, when we drop our desire to be perceived of in a certain way, we set the world free and we set ourselves free. This is a paradigm change. You know, we're accustomed to being busy in our minds, an incessant dialogue running on and on. We're accustomed to distracting ourselves constantly. I even do this myself, just a moment of boredom, and I'm picking up my phone. This kind of listening takes courage, and it's a discipline, and it's a new paradigm. All change at first is uncomfortable. And it's, so hang on, time out. You know, it, it takes an effort to listen. It takes an effort to change. It takes no effort to just be an NPC in this life, living out the program we were handed, looking at the world not as it is, but how we think it should be, or looking at the world as what it used to be, living our lives in, in total resistance. It takes an effort and it takes a discipline. And you know, at Unity, we talk about these spiritual things. There's no shortage of beautiful spiritual tools and principles that we talk about here. But the real question is, do you desire to make a difference in this world? Do we truly desire to heal from the inside out? Because this whole principle of listening starts with turning it within to turn it within and realize all the unshed tears we have. The only way we can get there is by truly relaxing our hearts open, to lovingly turning this attention inward, loving, lovingly listening inward with reckless acceptance of our own crazy, <laughs> of our own fears, listening and lovingly to our own shame, our inadequacies, listening and lovingly even to the noise in our minds in acceptance. Because once we begin to do that, once we begin to love ourselves in all our ugliness, in all our brilliance, then we can begin to look out and see the world in the same way that we can show up in our relationships with our spouse, with our friends, with our children with loving attention, which brings a sense of grace, a sense of ease. You know, and, and we can break that down to, you know, in a sense of grace and a sense of ease, you know, our immune system works better, we live longer, we make better decisions, we're able to learn. But it's a practice, and it's a discipline, and it's a choice. And it's a choice we can make in any given moment. But to choose to do it in any given moment begins to open up a new paradigm for us, which brings enrichment and worthiness to our lives. In spite of the little nits and stits we're hearing on this, I invite you to follow me on a journey in words. If you can close your eyes and imagine the ocean. Imagine you're looking upon a sea of swells. And these swells are rising and falling, and blowing across these swells is a squall. The wind's blowing across the swells, and it's drawing up moisture, and it's spinning wet into clouds and sending some back down, raindrops. And this swell and this squall and this wind comes blowing into the coastal range, seeping over the coastal range, pouring into the Willamette Valley. And then it pushes against the Cascades, and it sends waves of air toppling over the tops of the Cascades, flowing down across the pine trees into the canyon of the Deschutes. And as it comes blowing across Highway 20 into the spiritual unity community, into this building, and you're now taking a breath of this air. 
And this air is passing from your lungs into your bloodstream and coursing through your veins and reaching your heart. And hello and welcome to your life. You have just been jacked into the most amazing fantasy game ever imagined, and it's called Actual Reality. And with every beat of your heart and breath you take, you are a player in this game, a dancer on the stage. And the stage is everything you see and smell and taste and touch and feel and hear and think. And where you go in your mind, and the real question is, what do you want out of this? If someone wishes to be miserable, life will provide no shortage of misery. And if someone wishes to perceive of their game, their dance, their stage as though it were a tasty treat extravaganza, beckoning for you to peruse these delicacies, this life can also be. So I have a few words for you along your way, my fellow travelers. And that is that love is bigger than religion. Truth is older than scriptures. Innocence is indestructible. Innocence is indestructible like every wave crashing the shore, every newborn baby crying, every dandelion that grows up through the cracks <clears throat> in the sidewalk to reflect its own goldenness onto the sun. Integrity is a light in our heart that never goes out. We may forget it, we may deny it, we may rage against it, but it is there forever shining, awaiting our inevitable remembrance of it. True beauty is the feeling inside of us that inspires us to dance, not how we look when we dance. True beauty is the feeling inside of us that inspires us to sing, not how we sound when we sing, and we're free to be beautiful right now. There is so much more to us that is awaiting to be realized if we can begin to simply slow down, relax our hearts open, and listen within. And I wish you all the best. Thank you.